Hello, this is Rodney Brown with Nerd Caliber, and I am here with uh, the cast of The Expanse, Stephen Strait and Dominique Tipper. Hello. So let's start right off with uh, a, a question about how difficult is it to do the zero-G work versus doing the work against sort of the green screen stuff that you have to do with all the special effects? Oh, it's, yeah, it's, um, you know, in, often, often they come together, you know, so we're, we're oftentimes doing wire work within the kind of green screen work as well. Um, it's the practicality of actually being lifted off of the ground and kind of being suspended. It, you, I find that it informs the choices that we make within the scenes themselves. So you can rehearse the scene, you know, at home and you have an idea in your head, but then when you're suspended upside down 30 feet in the air, suddenly the scene goes a little differently. Yeah, it's definitely more of a challenge. Yeah, for sure. Um, I'm assuming you don't actually have a rig at home to re rehearse that part of it. Well, I... Yeah. <laughs> you I've got don't? a zero-G room <laughs> in my apartment. That's right. We shot most of this no. on location. So, yeah, there were no wires. We're out in space. Yeah. Now, you've done both... Both of you have done zero or wire work before, yes? Uh, yeah, I have. Not to that extent, Not though. Not to that extent? No. Okay. I have, yeah. yeah. How do you actually do the zero G work and make it look as good as you do? Uh, it, you can often tell in production work when people are doing wire work. I don't see any of that in this show. It's it's the best zero G I've We're ever seen. Really, really good at it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all there is to know. I'm joking. We have a choreographer on set that helps us with like making sure we look weightless. Um, but it's a thing that you just have to kind of keep in the back of your head while you're doing the scenes to make sure your arms are revealing that we're you know we're weightless so I don't know maybe we just are really good at it I mean it's yeah. totally possible yeah but yeah I mean you really thank you <laughs> yeah you know the other part about the you know the show is that we're very stringent on making sure that the science is real um, so you know if 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 someone's watching and catches maybe a movement that doesn't jive with zero gravity we'll just redo it I mean because we'll know. probably know about it yeah, so, yeah you've yeah. actually done reshoots well not reshoots but just but another take you another know take. yeah another couple of takes or whatever just to make sure that we get it right um, yeah, but you know, it's like the realism of the show in many ways is really what grounds it and allows it to be relatable. So um, we take, it's, we, it's very important. We, we, we take it very seriously. So uh, I've got a couple of character specific questions. So we start with, with Stephen, with Jim Holden. Yeah. He is a pretty, he could be a very typical reluctant hero. Right. He's very reluctant. He doesn't come across as a typical reluctant hero. There's very few times where you want to just sort of reach in the screen and slap him. <laughs> yeah. Very few. <laughs> yeah, okay. sure. Congratulations. Thank you. How tough is it? How did you figure out how to do that, how to portray this character as somebody who, who is that sort of reluctant hero trope, right. but doesn't come across as a, as a stereotype? Yeah, thank you. I, I, I really did, when I was building the character, I, I didn't want to have kind of prototypical archetypal reluctant hero. I, I wanted to show the struggle of him becoming this man. I mean, oftentimes, and there's no right or wrong way to play it, depending on what you're doing, but oftentimes when you see that archetype, suddenly like a regular guy will just appear, you know, as, a, as this hero or this guy, and I didn't want that to be Holden's journey. I wanted, I want the audience to see him struggle and make mistakes and kind of fumble his way forward into this, um, into this man who, has become a leader out of circumstance. You know, he, I'm not sure he knew it was in him, himself. And it just happens to be that he's in the midst of this crazy conspiracy and crisis that, you know, he was the first domino. He's the one who pushed it forward. He's and um, fueling it. <laughs> yeah, and he has to take responsibility. And, um, and it's hard. And, and, you know, you see him lose pieces of his, of his idealism and his kind of black and white morality. And, um, and he's, you know, not, uh, his likability is not really my concern as an actor. I just, I just want him to be, I want to portray it as real as possible to, to watch, you know, I think in my own interpretation how leaders actually become leaders uh, in real life, you know. Excellent, excellent. That actually leads very well to sort of black and white point yeah. into the question about Naomi. So Naomi is, if anything, the least black and white view in the entire show. She's the very, she's the political mind of the show, uh, or at least it seems that way to me. Um, how much research or thought did you put into, say, current geopolitical situations to try to inform how Naomi reacts to the political situations in the future solar system? 
I actually think that the thing about our show is that it's very much in tune and in line with what's going on today. So I didn't really have to research that that much. It's on the page and it's part of my own experience in real life. And it didn't take much for me to uh, move that over into her experience. And, you know, like I grew up in a working class environment in East London. My, my kind of views of the world and and not don't differ that much from Naomi's. In some ways they do, uh, in some ways they don't. You know, I've grown up in an underclass and um, I think in that respect, she is essentially the voice of the people. Her, her thoughts and her uh, suggestions that she puts forward are always for the, the, you know, on a smaller scale of looking after the crew. Like she wants to hold on to everyone's humanity and she wants to keep them, keep them thinking about more on the love side rather than the hate. And so, you know, it just pans out that way that it is very in tune with what's going on today. And I think that's why people can relate to her so much, but also, yeah, she's, she's the heart of the group, you know? And I think being female as well, like that, it's much needed and it's why it stands out in the group because you have men and you have egos. And I think Naomi's always the one that kind of just goes, look, a bit kind of almost from a mothering point of view, like looking after everyone. So yeah. It, I don't know, it, didn't, it, it pulls a lot from my own experience in some ways. Okay. Last question, we'll make it a quick count because it looks mm -hmm. like they're moving us along. Yeah. Uh, have you both read the books? I've I, read... I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I've read like only up to where we're at. I okay. always read afterwards. Okay. And, and so I like even, to be surprised. I've read the first three. Okay. Yeah. So without giving away any spoilers, unless of course you want to give us spoilers, <laughs> what are you most looking forward to? And based on what you've heard, what are you most looking forward to in the coming season and coming seasons? You know, I'm looking forward to continuing these arcs. I mean, you know, it's been such, and I know that seems very general, but the, you know, the, the lovely part about doing a show like this that has such a pedigree and such great source material is to flesh these characters out over long periods of time and to have the character development be justified at every moment. You know, you, like, you really see how these people become who they are. Um, so I'm honestly just excited to continue that going forward. Dominique? He said what I was going to say, very much the same thing. I think we all kind of get our own little storylines. You get to see a lot more of how we tick and why, what's happened to us. And so um, I think people are going to get even more attached to everyone this year. And yeah, awesome. I'm excited Excellent. for that. Thank you both very much. Thank you. This is Rodney Brown for Nerd Caliber, signing out.